Welcome to sixth grade. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Mediterranean civilizations. Right. Uh, our notes for this style, what I would like you to do is an outline, okay? And again, I have set it up so uh, it's color coded. So our Roman numerals are going to be in red, okay? Uh, and then our uh, then the letters A, B, all right, and so on and so forth, they're going to be in blue. And then the numbers that underneath them or the important details are going to be in black, okay? Uh, so when you see those uh, throughout the notes, you, that will you understand. So again, in the book, uh, the red equals it. <laughs> the red represents the main heading of the passage or the red title in the book. The blue is the headings of the small paragraphs. And then the information uh, within here are from the... Uh, from the paragraph okay all right so let's begin all right uh, so the first thing we need to talk about with Mediterranean civilizations are the Phoenicians okay or as one of my former students used to call them the Phanachnox all right uh, but the Phoenicians are important because they are a civilization that is, uh, is very powerful in terms of trade okay um, so they were able to control trade throughout much of the Mediterranean um, by the vessels that they used. They were seagoing people, so even though you'll see on a map here in a moment um, how small their territory was, they're extremely powerful because they could control what was traded and when it was traded. Um, they brought exotic goods from all around uh, the Mediterranean as well. Another important achievement of the Phoenicians uh, was the alphabet, okay? Um, their alphabet used 22 symbols to represent the sounds of language, much like ours uses 26 to do the same type of a thing. All right, um, and what this did was the the alphabet allowed a lot of people to trade with each other more so than if you had a scribe. Because if you had a scribe, you had to hire him. You had to go around when you made a trade. Only the scribes could communicate with each other because they knew what the symbols meant. Whereas with the Phoenician alphabet because it was based on sound or phonetics, uh, more people could speak it, understand it, and then you could uh, create a better system of trade. The place for their colony was over here uh, in what we would consider today Israel and Syria. Um, you know, over here is Jerusalem, the modern day capital of Israel. Uh, they had colonies here uh, on the island of Cyprus. And they also had colonies over here in Spain uh, and up along you know, modern day nations uh, in Africa, okay, and then also a little one here and here, okay. So they had, you know, their colonies were strategically placed so that they could control trade, which was kind of unique because they're the only people really at this time that are venturing out into the seas to control these trade routes. Okay, um, just a little sidebar here. Uh, if you look. You know, here's cuneiform, which I talked about before. Okay, so this symbol right here uh, can represent either a sound, a word, a phrase, a concept, all right, based on the different triangles that it was made with the lines. Whereas over here we have the Phoenician alphabet, um, where each letter represents a sound. Okay, so this is a wa sound, this is a zil sound, this is a h sound, all right. So all of these represent sounds. So you would write this out just like. Um, so let's say, for instance, if I wanted to write out uh, my last name, you know, we would go, let's see, there's P, the H is a box, um, I, I don't know if I don't see an I, okay, but anyways, you, you kind of get the idea, whereas if it was in form, it may be triangles with lines, you know, all sorts of different types of things, all right? All right, now the next part of our talk is about the Israelites, okay? Um, the Israelites are important in history uh, for many different reasons, but the biggest one is uh, this key term that you see here, monotheism, okay? Or a belief in one God. At the time, many, many, many civilizations were polytheistic, or they believed in many gods. <laughs> okay, and so this followed, the, this, 
they basically followed God's direction to leave Mesopotamia. All right? God told them that we needed to leave uh, Mesopotamia. Okay? Uh, so they went to they went from their homeland of Canaan to Egypt. And while living in there, uh, a famine caused the Israelites to it should be flee, not fell. Um, here, let's just fix it right now. To flee. All right, to flee to Egypt. Um, and the Israelites lived there for hundreds of years. Okay. Now, uh, the desert, uh, one of their leaders, Moses, led the Israelites out of Egypt, uh, and then they wandered the desert for 40 years. Okay. So then eventually they returned to Canaan. All right. And under, and then there, there they were united uh, under the first king of Saul. Uh, then the second king of David establishes this, the capital of Jerusalem, okay? And Jerusalem will become uh, a major factor in modern day history uh, because three different religions, uh, is, uh, Judaism, Christians, and Islam, all have holy places uh, within Jerusalem. So it's, a, it's an interesting place, needless to say. Uh, king Solomon, all right, who ends up to be the kind of the third king in line. Uh, he builds his temple in Jerusalem that becomes Israelites' main place of worship. All right, after his death, the country was split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Okay? This is important because um, later on here, uh, this kind of dictates what happens later on in modern history of uh, who can go where. Okay? So there's the northern kingdom of Israel, and then there's the southern kingdom of Judea. All right. uh, from there, they go into exile. Uh, or the Syrians, we talked about the Syrians earlier in the chapter, uh, mean, vicious people. Uh, but they exiled thousands of Israelites to distant parts of the empire. So they, they dispersed them throughout the empire. So they weren't allowed to live <coughs> in Israel or Judea anymore. Um, and we've heard about the Chaldeans. All right, they conquered the Assyrians. Uh, but then the Chaldean king, Nebuchadnezzar, he exiles even more um, Israelites out of Judea and sends them all across Babylonia. All right, so here's the map, okay? Uh, this is the modern, this is where Canaan is. You notice that it's the modern-day country of Israel, which would go from, um, which is the modern-day country of Israel, runs along the Jordan River through the Dead Sea, kind of like this, all right? And then um, Saudi Arabia and uh, some more modern-day countries are over here, Iraq, Iran. You know, here's the Tigris River. There's the Euphrates River. Okay. All right. Um, make sure that you bring your notes to class, all right, and we will uh, get going um, on putting these to use. If you have any questions, make sure you ask those in class as well. I'll talk to you later.